first lesson in animation and you can kind of tell here we're gonna make our animated turtle and this is kind of a lesson in frame-by-frame -frame animation um, throughout this lesson I'm going to show you guys a couple tricks uh, like duplicating layers using your magic wand tool and then using something called the paint bucket tool to make different colored backgrounds all right or you can use um, pictures if you want for your backgrounds you can use you can do a lot of different things with this project to make it personalized and make it more like your own project um, so I'm going to start out by introducing a tool to you guys called the Magic Wand Tool. And this is really cool. The Magic Wand Tool is underneath your Quick Selection Tool. And you're going to click on it and it's going to look just like this. It's going to turn your cursor into literally what looks like a magic wand. Um, so look up here at your op options bar. With every tool that you select in Photoshop, you have different options. All right. So this is the main thing you want to worry about with your Magic Wand Tool, this thing called Tolerance. So Tolerance, right now it's set to 32. That means that wherever I click in this picture, um, the magic wand tool is going gonna, is gonna to select automatically the closest 32 pixels to that little space that I just click in as far as colors go. Okay, If I actually up my tolerance, because I do want to select all of the white background in like one click, if I up my tolerance to like 50 and start clicking around, you can kind of see it's getting all of the white background literally with just one click. If you catch yourself um, making a selection and it's getting too much, um, like it's it's picking up some like beiges or maybe some light browns or something in the background, then you need to lower your tolerance because you're saying, hey, you know, wherever I click, I'm going to get the closest pixels. Let's do like 100 here, and I'll show you what it does. See if it'll select the whole turtle. Um, not really. Uh, you can kind of see it's still just getting the white background. Um... So the way tolerance works is literally to be like, oh, I, I got the closest 100 pixels to the background, and our background's totally white. Um, so I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to start selecting this entire background, making sure that I select it all. And it looks like I do have it all selected. I think I do anyway. It looks like I do. We'll find out. I'm going to go ahead, because um, right now I have the background selected and not my turtle. I'm going to go select, select inverse. And that's going to flip my selection on top of my turtle. So now I have my turtle selected. And what I'm going to do over here on my layer, now that I have my turtle selected here, is do something. All right, sorry. What I'm going to do now um, with my turtle, now that I have them all selected, is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say layer via cut right here. So it's basically going to cut out my turtle. And notice when I actually hide my turtle, I can see that it's cut out from the white background. So now the turtle is actually separate from the background, which is going to be important because you want the turtle to move and not the actual background. And we're going to do some other things with our background, like um, change the background color and things like that too. So go ahead and select the background layer, layer 0, and we're going to go ahead and get crazy with our paint bucket. I don't know if we've really ever used our paint bucket um, too much, but with our paint bucket tool selected, which is right underneath your gradient tool, and with our foreground color set to white, we're just going to paint in the white background. Notice how with every click that I make, it's darkening in um, the pixels from the outline of the turtle. Okay, And now that that's all painted in, I can go ahead and bring back in my turtle. All right. Now this is going to be really cool. Um, what we're going to do is basically put an animation mesh um, down on my turtle, and then we're going to make small movements and duplicate our layers. And every movement we make, we're going to duplicate our layer again um, so that this kind of has a feel of like old school, you know, Walt Disney type animation. All right, so check this out. We're going to do something called puppet warping. So um, go to the edit tab up top. A um, little bit more than halfway down, you're going to see something called puppet warp. It's going to put an animation mesh just around your turtle. Notice how I didn't have to select the turtle with my quick selection tool because the only layer that I have selected over here is layer one. And remember, now that layer one is separate from layer zero because that layer zero now has a filled in background and we cut the turtle out from it. So this is how um, this is how the animation mesh kind of works. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to put like anchor points down on places that you don't want to move. I'm going to move my turtle's neck to start with. Um, so I'm going to anchor down my entire turtle. So I'm just going to start putting these anchor points down so that these points don't move when I do move the turtle's neck. So I'm just going to anchor down the entire body. Start clicking and placing these anchor points down on your actual turtle. So I don't want this foot to move. And it's really important to make sure you have a lot of anchor points around the part of the turtle that you're actually moving so that that stays stationary. And 
be careful not to click and drag while you're doing this too. You can't put too many anchor points close together. That's what that pop-up just said. All right, so now I'm gonna put one anchor point right here in the turtle's neck, and I'm gonna put one right on his nose. This is gonna act like the neck joint that it's gonna, the neck is gonna bend from, and this is gonna be how I'm gonna actually pull my turtle, okay? Um, what I'm gonna do, first of all, before I do any of that, um, I'm gonna press enter, and I'm gonna duplicate layer one. So before you even do your anchor points, I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Boom, I should have done that first. Now, go to edit and do your puppet warp tool and anchor down your turtle. You'll see why here in just a second. You always want a background layer that you haven't really touched. And that'll be like the first frame of your animation. So technically we've already made our first frame. And did you see how my turtle just moved there with that anchor point? That's not gonna be good for me. You're gonna see that that's gonna make my animation look a little sketchy. All right, so anchor point right in his neck one right on his nose that I can actually bend him down from. All I'm going to do is hover over here on his nose, and I'm just going to bend that neck down, just like that. Notice how I can still see um, the outline of the turtle in the background? That's layer one. So that's like my first frame of my animation, all right? So I'm going to make my movement a little bit smaller, because I want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to say there, and then press enter, okay? Notice. That's my first frame right there, and as I hide it, this is actually my second frame. So with my second frame, I'm gonna duplicate the layer again, and I'm gonna make an even smaller movement here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hide these two layers because I don't wanna see them, it's gonna mess me up. I'm gonna go to Edit, I'm gonna go to Puppet Warp again, not Perspective Warp, thank you. I hate how Orange YouTube has little tutorials there. Puppet Warp. And again, I know it gets tedious, but put down your anchor points across your whole turtle. Whatever you don't want to move on your turtle, anchor it down. Okay, and when you think you have enough anchor points, especially around the part of the turtle that you are going to move, put the one in the neck, put the one in the nose, and with this layer, I'm gonna move it down just a little bit more. Okay, if you want, you can turn on your background layer. No, it won't let you while you're, while you're in it. So just make very small movements, and then when you're done, press Enter. All right? So you can kind of see, if I were to turn on light bulb, that's my first frame, second frame, third frame. Okay, first frame, second frame, third frame. So you can see little bitty movements, and my neck is slowly going down. I'm going to probably do one more. Duplicate layer. Say OK. Um, let's go ahead and hide these two layers. Um, edit. Puppet Warp. Alright, and this will be my last one, and then I'll show you guys how to make your, your layers into frames of animation so that it looks like the head is bobbing up and down. And then we can worry about what's going on in the background. Okay, anchor down everything. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, one more in the neck, one more in the nose, and just pull them down one more time. And then press enter. All right, so now we've got four frames here, and you can kind of see each frame is giving me very small movements of my turtle. Okay, okay. So, um, so what I'm gonna do now is open up what's called my timeline, and think of this as your, um, frame by frame animation, all right? So you're gonna go window, and you're gonna say timeline. This little thing down here is gonna open up at the bottom. You're not creating a video timeline. We're actually creating frame animation. So change this to frame animation, and then actually click frame animation, okay? So notice here how we have one frame, and we have basically one layer in that frame. This right here, this little half-folded piece of paper will give us some more frames. So I'm just gonna click it a few times, all right? All right. And now that you have some frames down here, it's kind of all about the eyeballs in your layers and how you populate your frames. So for frame number one, I'm gonna go ahead and just uncheck all the eyeballs. And let's say this is gonna be the first frame. When my turtle starts, this is where he starts from. For frame two, I'm gonna turn off that layer and turn on this layer. For frame three, I'm gonna turn, on, turn off layer one and turn on layer one copy two. 
for frame four, I'm going to turn on my last layer. So now, as I click through my layers, you can kind of see the rough animation here that's going to be happening. Okay? So, what I don't want to happen is just to go from here to head up. All right? So I'm going to kind of reverse the process here. I'm going to say instead of right here, just popping up and going back to layer one, it should be the layer right below that so that the head kind of lifts itself back up. Kind of like that, okay? So for here, I'm gonna say that layer. For frame seven, I'm gonna go ahead and say layer one. I must have missed one. There. So you kind of get the idea. Okay? All right, so check this out. All of your frames have these little zero seconds under it, and if you were to hit play right now, it would go once. It should actually go a lot faster than that. But um, what you want to do is kind of slow it down a little bit. Right here, I'm going to say that I'm going to make mine at like 0.2 seconds. Each frame is going to be about 0.2 seconds. There we go. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And then here, where it says once, I'm going to say I'm going to loop it forever. This is your loop button right here. So how many times is it going to repeat? So now, if I play my turtle, you can kind of see I have a nice smooth movement. Notice my mistake. When I was recording the video, how I said that's not going to work out well for me, you can kind of see my body is twitching a little bit because when I was putting down one of those anchor points, I moved my picture a little bit. But for the first animation, this is not bad. So here's a little challenge to you. Now that you have the turtle's neck moving, what else can you make happen in this picture? You might say that in these little white spots up here, maybe a picture or a little idea pops up. Or how about you actually change the color of each frame of your layer so that one goes white, the background layer goes white, one goes red, one goes blue, one goes green. Can you do that without me showing you how to do that? Because it is possible <clears throat> and it's not that difficult. Um, so see if you can take this a step further. Um, incorporate some other layers into your animation. And remember, creating your animation is not really about your layers over here. It's more about your frames. So you can you can control what's in your frames by turning on and off the eyeballs in your light in your um, in your frames. All right. So how do we make this a GIF? When you are all done, you've got your turtle moving. You've got something cool happening in the background, and I'll leave that totally student choice. You know, if you want to make little pictures pop up in the background, or maybe like a little. Um, scenery um, in the background like kind of moving like maybe um, him make make it seem like the turtle is actually walking by maybe moving the scene and every frame you have the scene move just a little bit longer that's fine so what we're gonna do now is save this as a gif we're gonna say file we're gonna say um, export we're gonna say save for web or legacy edition okay when we save for web or legacy edition make sure up here that it says um, GIF, okay? Um, don't touch any of this stuff right now. You can just leave everything kind of the way it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. It's gonna ask me where I wanna save it. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put it on my desktop for right now so that I can see it. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save. <clears throat> now, I have saved my image as an animated GIF. So when I do open it up, it should be actually animated. All right, and to see if that actually works, um, you can take your GIF. You guys might be able to just open yours up. I'm gonna just drop mine on Safari. Boom, there's my animated turtle right there. Okay, so again, the smaller the movements that you make with the neck, the better it's gonna look. So the more frames that you have with smaller movements before you actually create your frame animation, the better your turtle's gonna look. Your turtle should look nice and smooth. Um, Play around with it. See if you can incorporate other things happening in the background and things like that. And have fun with it, guys. This is your first lesson in animation. The next thing we do is a Marvel superhero GIF, and then we do a DC superhero GIF.